What's up, guys? I'm Salty Mike, and this is your weekend review for August 24th, 2020. As always, I want to thank you guys for all the support on the channel. Lately, you guys have been really, really awesome. Uh, great comments and all that stuff. We have had a lot of weird issues with uploads lately, especially of Answer the Call, so I appreciate you guys with all the patience with that. And we have a big week in review this week, so we got to get right into it. So before we do, make sure you hit the like button if you do appreciate the video, because it does help us out big time. All right, getting right into it. Patch notes updates. We had three patches since last week. We had a 3.10.1 go live. Um, this was essentially all the PTU patches that we discussed last week, piled into one and pushed to live. And that is currently the live build and it's quite stable, working quite well. It does have its issues, um, especially like trying to take on, uh, take off armor and put new armor on, things like that. It, it has that huge delay that we've been dealing with throughout the entire 3.10 cycle with multiple things. Uh, they also had a PTU, 3.10.2. This was a general test for long-term pers persistence, especially with purchased ships. So between 3.9 and 3.10, we lost any ships that we purchased. A lot of the accounts, I know I know my accounts did. Any of the ships that you purchased for in-game credits, poofed into the ether. And uh, it was pretty frustrating, right? Because you felt like you were making progress in the game somewhat and then your progress was wiped, even though there wasn't a wipe. Uh, they seem to have found a fix with this specific, uh, particular patch, and uh, yeah, this this was mainly a patch to confirm that fix. They also resolved the pesky ex exploit that they were dealing with that was being taken advantage of, where you can make like a ton of either UEC or merits, and not only was this making people wealthy, but it seemed like it was also like breaking the shopping service altogether so you weren't able to swap your armor you weren't able to buy anything it was a big problem and uh lastly hotas users and uh, all the different types of hotas users i'm putting every blanketing everyone in that uh should now be able to use interaction mode and their moby glass without having their inputs inter uh interrupted so that means if you're full thrust like trying to leave the surface of a planet and you're checking what your ne next mission is your thrust will continue, which is really nice. Then we also had a 3.10.2b, which is just more of that long-term persistence testing, but it also increased lawful delivery mission rewards. Lawful delivery mission rewards, but it didn't increase the unlawful side. So the lawful missions were 8,000 and the unlawful were 6,000. So a little bit weird and they continue to fix more input issues for joystick users. Um, I assume since 3.10.2 is not live yet, that they might adjust those prices a little bit in the future for those mission delivery rewards. All right, moving on to roadmap updates. Uh, we didn't have a roadmap roundup this week because I think that they're pretty much laser focused on their new roadmap that they're going to be debuting in the immediate future. And the immediate future happened to be, I think, like three weeks after they said the word of words immediate future, but we have it now, so let's discuss it. The new roadmap preview, uh, they started with an intro that they said they want to show more and speak less. Uh, we've heard that before, um, but if like, if you really look at it, that's actually true. That's what they have been doing, but I don't know how you guys feel. To me personally, it feels like the development has been more closed off and closed off and closed off than ever before. But I think the real reason for that is just the general focus on Squadron 42. And I think as Squadron 42 gets finished, if it ever does, we'll, we'll see that open back up a little bit more. Then they discussed their limitations of the old roadmap. So they, they weren't showing what they were working on all the time because the current roadmap only shows what's estimated to be delivered at a given time. Um, what I fail to think they realize is, is that that is what most of us care about. I, I, I think I speak for most people. I know there's a lot of people that are really interested in how game development works, um, but at this point, I think we just want to know when a feature will be delivered and what that feature entails at this stage. That, that's my personal opinion. Leave a comment below and let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of you appreciate the uh, the game development side of these things. Um, but I think in general and, and what a roadmap really should do is tell you when. And yeah, that's just kind of my opinion on that. We discussed a lot of that in Answer the Call uh, yesterday, so make sure you guys check out that video as well. Next, they state when something moves off the roadmap that it doesn't mean it's not being worked on. And some people believe that it's delayed or canceled, but in reality, that is sort of what's happening, right? Like things are getting delayed. They are getting canceled 
or that given patch because people got excited that that item was going to be in that patch and then it moved out. So that is a huge limitation of the old roadmap. The solution now, uh, it's essentially to take the sprint report from ISC and display it on that roadmap. Uh, and, and that's what everyone's doing at the moment. Here, here you go, guys. This is what everyone's doing. ISC in my, um, excuse me, the sprint report in ISC saved their video content. I think that is the best format that they've had yet is to show what's actively being worked on now. Um, even if some things are in general, like research and development stage, uh, this should allow us to see all that foundational tech that we're waiting for, like iCache, server meshing, and the, and the Gen 12 renderer, as well as the stuff slated for patches in the near future. So not just what's currently being worked on for, for example, 3.11, but things that are being worked on in general. So iCache, server meshing, Gen 12 renderer, those are really important features, and those should be on this roadmap. They didn't state that in this post, but if they're going to show what the teams are working on, these should be some of those things. Um, the problem to me is, again, this isn't really a roadmap. There's no end of the road. Roadmaps should have an end. Um, it, it, it's just examples of a bunch of random things that are working on that doesn't really show... Somebody explained in the answer the call comments that it's sort of like a puzzle piece. Each of these things that they're working on is a puzzle piece. And for me, I'm not 100% sure how the way they're displaying it will show what puzzle piece goes to to finish what final product would be right so for me i think that that that's the only bit of feedback that i would give to this i actually like what they're doing it looks really nice it's sort of easy to understand the problem with it is is how is somebody who doesn't know anything about the project or even someone like me who doesn't know a lot about game development and is constantly asking you questions about it uh how are they gonna take that puzzle piece and know what that really is going to change and what that's going to essentially help finish um that's that's the part of this roadmap that i'm, I'm not quite sure is going to work out really well um again i think this is a massive improvement on what we had before i just i i i, I i'm not sure i think the problem is it doesn't solve the problem people want to know in year eight of development when things are going to start looking finished. I mean, Morphologist did a video about our previous week's answer the call with, with Soros about, you know, things not really having value, things not really mattering in the game. And the amount of comments about it's an alpha uh, is really unnerving for me. And it like, yeah, it is an alpha. So it's time to add uh, gameplay elements and things to have value and obviously there's prerequisites for that so this roadmap should help resolve that need for us to know in my like right so for me in order for this roadmap to work i should be l less confused as to why we don't have things of value in the game why we have less gameplay loops right it should explain well you need this this and this and that in order to make this, right? That's what I feel like the roadmap should should uh, show, and I'm not sure this one quite does that. So uh, they have a lot more time to work on it, and I hope they they kind of hear this out and and uh, you know take it into consideration because I don't think this is a bad thing. Uh, I, I actually thought this was a pretty good post, aside from the amount of time it took to come out. Uh, moving on, guys. Video updates. We are pretty jam packed here, so let's get into it. We had an ISC where they started out with an improved throw feature. So just for reference, they go into what the problems with the current throw. So the main issues that we found with the throw mechanic was the precision of the throw wasn't very accurate. You don't really know where the grenade's going to go for sure when you throw it. It was a bit confusing with the overarm and underarm. So if you aimed above a certain point in the screen, it would go into overarm. And then if you did under that point, it'd go into underarm. So we just kind of wanted to make it a bit more robust, make it a bit clearer and make it more precise. Yeah, that's pretty accurate with my experiences. They're useful, but too hard to use. So people tended not to use them. Uh, then what are they changing to fix them coming in 3.11? We're going to be changing up the different controls so that you've got a bit more time to decide how you want to throw instead of your G button, which will be your equip and throw. 
We're going to be having the G to then select and equip your grenade. And then we've got your left mouse button, which is going to be overarm throw, your right mouse button, which can be underarm throw. We're going to add like a display to show where exactly what you're throwing is going to go to. We're going to have mass involved. This is going to benefit throw by making it feel a lot more realistic. Personally, I like all these changes. Nothing new from any other FPS game, really. And why reinvent the wheel? I, I think the two buttons to make throw a little bit more intuitive is a, maybe different. Uh, let me know in the comments below if other games do this, but I am looking forward to trying these things out. And lastly, what's coming in the future for throw? Obviously, we should be able to throw things other than just grenade. So looking to the future with throw, there's uh, physicalized damage on the horizon. Uh, there's also melee weapons. We might look at extending their use, combining it with throw. Uh, there's also the fact that every other prop that release from now on will using this system so all new content will be supported they mentioned throwing knives very cool looking forward to some of this stuff uh as well as to yeah throwing more picos out of my ship very much looking forward to that then we had a sprint report uh this was more on the environmental side it it seems like they themed this one a little bit they started out with lighting conversion to day night cycles again on area 18 they're still continuing with that concepts for eva access to space stations for Upcoming EVA missions, investigating, repairing, and combat missions. Very interesting. Uh, new defense turrets. Not sure what was wrong with the ones that we had, uh, other than the fact that they don't hit very often. Maybe there was less coverage than they initially planned. Uh, so that could be that. Early concepts for homesteads. For me, this is one of the most exciting things I've seen in a while, because that's what I want for my MMO uh, that I want to play. I want to be on my homestead doing my own thing. It's just what I've always enjoyed with MMOs. Also, he mentioned that these were for NPCs in these videos, so no clue if we would actually be able to get them, but still exciting nonetheless. And then, very big rocks, low flyers rejoice, enjoy. Then we had an SCL, and this one is also pretty jam-packed, and we started out with, uh, in general, it was an FPS SCL, so they start out with, uh, we're going to get a taser. Yeah, so we actually have a, FIFA, well, a form of non-lethal damage in the game already. So if you guys have actually been playing around with the melee combat system, it uses a damage type called stun. And when your stun reaches, goes over a certain threshold, you actually get knocked out. So one of the things that we're actually leveraging on a bit more at the moment, and something that's kind of in the current stage of inception and is going through combat at the uh, sorry, uh, concept at the moment, is the, uh, we're looking at effectively is what, it's going to become a taser. Um, uh, so it's going to be a very short range kind of pistol sized electron weapon, but it's more ramped up in terms of being non-lethal. So we're ramping up the stun damage on that um, rather than the actual kind of like um, radiant energy damage that's right. actually coming from it instead. Obviously tasers are likely essential for bounty hunting and it's a good step to seeing that gameplay come online. Uh, so seeing this, you know, is good because it will eventually lead to that. Very exciting. Uh, how are they also going to make interactions with items easier in the near term as it's pretty clunky right now? Yeah, so there's a few things we're looking to work on. Um, in the short term, we're actually looking at um, just inc increasing like the, the the way that you, sorry, improving the way that you interact with items around you. Um, so there's a, the idea of a swap wheel so that if you've got a bunch of things in your suit, you want to say, picking up ammo off the floor and your suit's full, give you a wheel, you can say, oh, actually, I want to swap it with what's on um, my slot here or just put it into my inventory. Um, we're also looking at default item actions and that is basically a system that's going to, I think, really improve the gameplay. Um, the player experience, it, it allows you to do things quicker. Um, it's basically choosing things that are most appropriate to your context. Um, we're also going to be improving the player interaction system. So at the moment it's just a flat list, uh, but we're actually going to be replacing that with a wheel, which is uh, aesthetically similar to like the, the, the personal line of thought menu. Um, and that's that's actually sort of in progress right now. Not sure when that's coming online, but we're working on it. So, you know, soon TM. Um, there's also the trading system that one of the other teams is looking at. And I think they're hoping to leverage the external inventory system that's been worked on right now. Um, that uh, should be going live um, 3.11, which would. Um, but as you know, everything's open to game development. We'll see. Um, the last part is most important, I think. It's sort of implying that the goal is to have the start of more like normal inventories. I think he mentioned only the external part of our suit and the trading of actual items by 311. 
Uh, did I hear that right? Like, I listened to this 20 times. I was expecting something like this much later based on the ISC about the trading app in the past. So, very nice. Maybe 311 won't be so bad. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, weapon attachments. Are we going to get any new ones in the future? They did that tier zero implementation and we haven't seen much since. So stuff like uh, grips. So grips. Um, we initially did want to do grips when we rolled out the um, attachment system, but there were quite a few animation complications. And I think the, the gains that we would have got from them at the time weren't really worth um, the amount of time they would have to put in to get them to work properly. So it's something that we are not currently looking at doing right now. Um, but never say never like they might come back at some point um when we actually have time to address that yeah. um and i think you mentioned barrels and stocks so yes. um again it's it's a never say never situation, but not right now so um we're, we're obviously looking at expanding out our existing set of attachment options for weapons but because our weapons are so unique from each other uh, and they're kind of very non-standard it's difficult to create stock and barrel options without you know taking up like a loads of art resources right so i mean like i think we've got and someone's going to probably give me the exact number now but i'm sure we've got 40 50 plus weapons in game at the moment just off the top of my head trying to create different barrels and stocks that are unique for each of them um is a, a huge undertaking so uh, not for the foreseeable at least i think everything he said here is reasonable but when he said like they want to flesh out what they currently have what that means is sights barrel attachments and under barrel attachments for me, the only really thing to add to Underbarrel is things like grips. Uh, I think that that would be really good. And he also mentioned that grips aren't really a thing they can do right now. So here's to hoping they can get some uh, animation resources at some point, because I think that that will really add value, like we mentioned before, to a lot of the weapon attachments. If you can tweak their values of um, how much recoil they give, stuff like that, then you can you know, actively try to achieve and find certain attachments throughout the game, uh, and maybe they just won't be for sale in a shop somewhere. You would actually have to earn them. Very, it would be cool. Uh, then we had some tractor beam talk. Very interesting, very interesting. We're working on the uh, multi-tool tractor beam currently. So that's not just picking things up and moving around, which in itself is cool. I've seen some prototypes of that recently, um, working over, over the server, which is really good. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also effectively use it to maneuver yourself in zero g without using um the eva so you literally just sort of it's effectively a, a laser grapple um, yeah. so you can swing yourself over and pull yourself in a direction uh which i think the gameplay of that's gonna be really cool uh so, so never say never in gravity uh don't know when that will come online but in terms of dragging yourself around in space with uh, multi-tool, that's coming soon, TM. All right, this is sick. I am so looking forward to this. Does this mean we can get Sataball? I'm gonna display over the screen what Sataball was meant to look like. Uh, this is very much similar to that, very excited. Then they went into downstates and this is kind of the last clip that we have here. And this is very important for things like, I don't know, uh, Death of a Spaceman. So th there's this more than one sort of down state. There's the, obviously the traditional, uh, you've been, effectively your health is zero and you're down waiting to be uh, revived. Um, so, so body dragging is definitely going to be used for that. Um, there's a whole slew of like health gameplay and uh, even um, uh, Death of Starman um, stuff coming in. So sorry, Spaceman, <laughs> murdering my words. Um, and uh, with in terms of like health stuff, we're, we're thinking that'll be like working on that towards start of next year. Obviously, that's you know, a massive caveat. Priorities will change, but yes, that is absolutely coming, uh, and it's a big part of our plans. Um, there are also going to be other sort of downed uh, states in terms of like your unconscious. Uh, we have that already with um, unarmed combat, um, but there's also like the band hunting side. So if you're sort of tied and bound uh, by a bounty hunter that's going to be like you know feed into that same sort of system so yes absolutely we're definitely planning that it's going to be a, a big part of gameplay you know you're dragging people around cover and healing them or holding them up uh, to your uh, your ambulance and getting them on on a, on a med bed on that um lots to come for that so yeah a lot to take in here but when you hear this stuff this is what makes the new roadmap make a lot more sense to me um you see the little bits that they need to do to make something a reality i hope just on the roadmap they do a better job of visualizing what each task will eventually lead to. It has to lead somewhere for it to be a road, and um, yeah, I hope we see that. But downstates are something really important to making this game happen because of the active 
idea of the death of a spaceman thing. Now we'll jump into quick hits. This is where I don't clip out things from SEL, but I, I just share you in my own words sort of what they said. Um, but again, link will be in the description. You should probably watch all of this yourself. Uh, they still talk about gadgets, but clearly it's not planned in the near future um, because there's probably lots of prerequisites like physical inventory, so it's understandable. Laser weapons will have batteries uh, that can be charged by your suit uh, to bring them within balance of physical ammo that you can strip from magazines and take for yourself. Alien weapons are not forgotten, but they are not a priority. Ammo types will be a thing, um, but they mentioned some weird attachment also that like different, you can put different ammo types in a magazine, but the weird attachment will be a smart thing. And you can say, I'll, I only want to use distortion ammo right now. And, and that's what the gun will use. Um, they want gun ranges to test weapons, but right now there's a lot of other prerequisites that prevent them like armistice zones. And uh, next year, they plan to allow us to shoot from seats uh, in ships and vehicles. And that also means we should be able to eat, drink, heal all those things from seats in the future. Very, very nice. Moving on to other updates. There was an Environment Art AMA. This was the recap post that I'm sharing with you. Uh, there's decent stuff here talking about removing rocks to make ground vehicles more useful. But I won't break it down too much. Again, link will be in the description just for the sake of time this week. Uh, they also showed that Taser sneak peek that we saw in SCL. Uh, they had a Foundational Moments post which is uh, a timeline of things that happened within the UEE, very much a lore post. There was another lore post about the Imperator um, election. So they're talking to one of the candidates. And lastly, there was a feedback post for the new delivery, delivery mission. So feel free to check that out. And that will do it, guys. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate all the love. Make sure you hit the like button and all that stuff. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you thought about anything that we discussed here. And make sure you hit the subscribe button for more weeks in review. And I'll see you guys next week.